Hero talents have definitely been more of a controversial topic the last couple weeks. There has been a lot of discourse around whether they're going to be good or bad, or if Blizzard's going in the right direction with them, but this last Tuesday, Blizzard announced eight new hero talents, and in this showcase, we actually got a few tank talent trees. So I really want to dissect those, and in this video specifically, I want to dive into Warrior Colossus Tree. This is an arms and protection warrior talent tree, but I'm going to be focusing more on the protection aspect of it. Now, per usual, a lot of this stuff, especially when it's being announced for a new expansion this far out, there is uh, a lot that can change. It's all subject to change. We've seen this with other trees like Oracle Priest, for example. So proper feedback on this throughout, um, you know, pre-alpha, alpha, beta testing will all be pretty useful. And with Blizzard coming back and announcing that they're going to be reworking Oracle, if there is anything that's bad, you know, I think Blizzard has been pretty good about coming back and responding to it or making changes. So with all of that out of the way, let's dive into the Colossus Warrior. So for those who don't know, the hero talents are going to be a new feature of the War Within expansion, which is going to be coming out I guess in August or September of 2024. And this is kind of the major selling point, the new, I guess, I don't know if it's borrowed power, but basically the new like massive feature. Now, personally, I really like this. I think that adding additional abilities, additional passives, and more of a stylized kit makes the game more enjoyable. A lot of the discourse has been around balancing and people wanting it more to be cosmetic, but that's not really what we're here to talk about. As you level up through the War Within, the level cap is going to be raised from 70 to 80, and as you level, you're going to unlock basically talent points, which will eventually unlock the full tree. So you don't have to worry about picking and choosing. There are a few choice nodes. So with the Warrior, especially Protection specifically, you're going to have access to Mountain Thane and Colossus. So Let's kind of walk through the Colossus tree. Now, upon picking this talent, you're going to gain an active ability called Demolish. Now, this is a 45 second cooldown, and there's going to be some kind of nuanced things that are going to build upon this ability. But essentially, this is the core fundamental aspect of this sub spec, I guess we'll call it. So it unleashes a series of precise and powerful attacks against your target and all enemies within eight yards. I'm assuming this won't be target capped, but it might have like drop off damage beyond eight. I'm sure they might rework this. We also don't see any kind of numbers here, so we're not sure for for one how much damage is actually going to deal. Obviously, this will scale with level. Um, it's going to scale with probably stats like versatility, main stat, as well as uh, possibly haste. It's going to most likely be a channel, but we don't know how long. What would be really cool if it's more of a buff or off the GCD where it would be able to channel while you can still cast spells, but with them saying you can block, parry, and dodge while using this ability, it makes me think that it's going to be a hard, probably, f I would guess, four-second channel. I don't know. Again, it might scale down with haste, so more haste, you might actually be able to get these off quicker. The one th tank thing I can compare this to might be Fell Devastation, though there doesn't seem to really be any... Um, defensive benefit to actually being in this channel outside of the fact that you could still you know block now obviously it would make sense to make sure you have a shield block up or maybe a defensive rolling while you enter demolish uh, or activate this ability but I think for the most part if this is a very strong you know single target or AoE button as long as it feels good to hit there's a cool animation it does big numbers I'm actually all for this I don't mind channeling as a tank uh, you see this, you know, thing, more nuance, but things like Zen Meditation, it's a fine ability in nuanced situations. You obviously see this with Fell Devastation. And actually, also going off of the, uh, you know, Demon Hunter kit, you have things like the Hunt. Somewhat channeled ability, 1.5 seconds, and it has you dash. Again, cool animation, does a lot of damage, feels good to hit. So, really, what I'm concerned with is not... Concerns not the right word. What I'm looking for is when we're able to test this ability, does it actually feel good to hit the button? Um, does it have like a good feel to it? That's really what it comes down to, because whether it's the most powerful thing, uh, whether you're going to want to be hitting on cooldown, if it makes it feel clunky and if it's a susceptible uh, death condition for the tank, especially in like Mythic Plus is what I prefer to focus on, it might not be so super great, but again, only time will tell. Now, basically, the rest of the tree is going to build talents. All of these talents are kind of built around this ability or more focused on certain abilities in your kit. Now, the... Mountain Thane was more focused on like nature damage, avatar thunderclap. So most likely this tree is going to be a little bit more focused around things like uh, your like revenge, uh, critically striking, ren damage, more of your physical uh, aspect. 
So we're going to kind of work our way down and then we'll get to the capsule and then I'll kind of go over everything. Uh, some of these are going to be pretty boring. Some of them are going to be pretty straightforward. Some are going to tie back into that demolish ability. But um, starting off, we have Martial Expert. Your critical damage is increased by 10% and the amount blocked by critical blocks is increased by 10%. Now, obviously, critical blocks uh, is specifically going to relate to the Protection Warrior. Uh, critical blocks, basically, um, it doubles the value of block. It is like the most simplified way to uh, say it. So this can be based off of both mastery and your critical strike. Not a super impressive like talent defensive bonus. So I've seen a couple people say, oh, it might incentivize crit. Most likely it won't. I mean, criti critical strike as a stat is great for damage. Um, it's now going to provide maybe a little more defensive value through martial expert. But most likely it's not going to dictate our stat weights. Uh, severely enough where we're going to just like start dropping like we're not going to we're going to ignore verse now for crit I don't see that happening with just this one passive ability but it is going to make crit have a little bit more defensive value with the critical block we also have Colossus Might so Mortal Strike and Shield Slam grant a stack of Colossus Might this is going to be uh, presumably a buff on your character of course Mortal Strike won't apply here because we're protection but basically um, every time you get a stack of Colossus Might it increases the damage done by your Demolished Channeled ability by 10% stacking up to 5 times. And then once you cast Demolish, it's going to consume your stacks. So basically, you Demolish, and then as it's on cooldown, you'll start building these stacks. Every time um, you cast Shield Slam, you'll hit 5 stacks, and then your next Demolish will do 50% more damage. Now, most likely, Demolish is probably going to be tuned fairly low, and then you're going to automatically get this pretty much by default, and it's going to get a 50% damage buff. Um pretty reliably now yes while it is a buff and it is a stacking buff you probably won't need to think about it at all because if you think about a 45 second cooldown you're shield slamming pretty frequently and it says it's not saying a, a chance it's just a shield slam grants you a stack so most likely within a 45 second window you're going to be able to um, get to five stacks and there are some towns later in the tree which uh, actually um, <clears throat> grant additional stacks, and then there's going to be some cool introduction. I'll get to that in a bit, though. We also have a uh, choice note, and this is going to be more or less for utility, probably more in Mythic Plus. Shockwave stun duration is increased by two seconds. Currently, it's a two second stun, it's going to be increased to four. Luckily for us, they're also going to move it in the talent tree. And then we have Earthquaker. Uh, Shockwave also knocks enemies into the air, and its cooldown is reduced by five seconds. Now, it's hard to say how this is going to interact exactly. Now, I, I have seen some people kind of speculating. Uh, it's going to stun and knock them at the same time. And the main component of this is going to be um, the cooldown reduction for Shockwave. So you're going to have more frequent stuns, which is extremely powerful in things like Mythic Plus. I've seen some people speculate that you might stun them for two seconds and then it knocks them in the air. To me, that doesn't make as much sense. If that was the case, it would be a weird interaction. It would be a little bit like the Shaman in Cap Totem that like replaces the totem once it's destroyed or it um, expires. Uh, it could be that, but I really doubt it. Uh, just because then it would actually make this easily way more powerful than everything else. Because honestly, most of the time when you stun on a Mythic Plus, while mobs being stunned for a long time is fine, uh, honestly, even a half second stun is valuable because it's stopping casts, um, whether they're interruptible or not. So more than likely, you're going to go into Bone Shaker every time. There might be nuanced situations where you go into Earthquaker where a knockup might be more valuable or you have a ton of uh, basically stuns in your group already. Depends on your composition. Now, luckily for us, they're also going to be moving Shockwave around in the talent tree. Not sure where they're going to place this. It's yet to be uh, seen and determined. So we're going to have to wait to see where it is. But most likely uh, could add a lot more utility to the warrior kit, which is always exciting. Moving on to the next row, we're going to kind of zigzag through this. Uh, going down one more um, from the Bone Shaker and Earthquaker. We have No Stranger to Pain. It's another choice node. So it's going to um, increase the prevented damage of Ignore Pain by 15%. And then uh, the other choice is Rally, which is taking damage as a low chance to give you second wind for two seconds. Now, second wind, and depending on the frequency of how often you're going to be taking damage and how often this can actually proc and what low chance actually means, this could be a very powerful trait, especially for Protection Warriors. We're already getting a ton of passive bleach from our kit. We do ignore a lot of damage through block and ignore pain. But we don't have a lot of on-demand healing. But <clears throat> what that typically results in is that a warrior could get knocked down to, like, let's say 50% health. You're not going to really heal yourself up quickly. But if second wind procs, you're going to see a lot more value from this because there might be, in general, less 
overhealing from this. So yeah, it, again, this is going to take some testing. It's going to depend on frequency of attacks. Does it proc off of dots? Is it direct damage? What does low chance actually mean? So rally, I personally, like I would like rally to be better. I like that kind of passive healing uh, that might come through as long as it's fairly consistent. The way that no stranger to pain reads, I don't know if it's saying it's increasing the cap of the shield. So right now, ignore pain. You're ignoring 55% of your damage, right? While the shield persists. Is that going to increase it to 70, but not increase the total cap? Or that would be better for protection. Or is it going to prevent the amount of the possible shield by 15%? Or how much actually hitting the ability gives you um, in terms of the shield, the absorb value. The total damage prevented by ignore pain increased by 15%. The way that it's it's worded for total damage, I would imagine that it's going to increase the cap of ignore pain by 15%. Now, I might be wrong about that. Let me know in the comments below if you have any like information on that, but we'll have to see. Anyways, solid choice, no defensive option. Um, this seems a little bit more favored in protection than, I'm thinking about arms a little bit. I'm like, well, you might not be taking damage frequently enough to, for Rally to be, like, efficient. And if it's total damage prevented by Ignore Pain, um, like I said, like, you can only use it every once, like, every, what, 11 or 12 seconds. So it's not super valuable because it's, I don't know, it just seems, like, pretty weak for, for arms. Uh, anyways, moving over, Colossus might increase the damage of Overpower and Revenge by 2%. So basically, kind of going back to the Demolish ability, as you're gaining stacks through Hitting Shield Slam, you're going to now be passively, well, I'm quoting passively, now your revenge is going to be doing 2% more damage stacking. So it stacks up to five times at this current state. So 10% more damage on revenge. Can't really complain about that. Uh, Warriors do need a little bit of an AoE boost. It's physical damage. It is a good filler. Uh, so there's some synergistic talents uh, in, the, in the kind of core class tree that could make revenge actually start dealing some pretty good damage. Though it's not necessarily like needed but it's a nice quality of life and then our last choice node in the tree uh you're gonna have the option between one against many shockwave cleave whirlwind and revenge deal five percent more damage per target afflicted up to five so basically it's just it's realistically buffing revenge again we have to see where shockwave and their capstones are moved to if you do play into like a shockwave damage build um you can get a lot of damage out of like sonic boom but again, we have to see what the rework looks like, but most likely this is going to relate to Revenge. So Revenge is going to be dealing 25% more damage here. You're going to be gaining some from Tide of Battle as well, and then we'll talk about like the capstones and stuff in a bit. Or you have Arterial Bleed. Colossus might increase the damage of Rend and Deep Wounds by 2% per stack. So 10% damage on Rend and Deep Wounds. We have been playing more or less of a Bleed-centric build since the start of Dragon Flights. Uh, Rend very powerful. Um, and deep wounds. It would be cool to see this also affect thunderous roar, uh, but you know what? Deep wounds and rend damage is fine. Moving down to our like kind of last row here, we have practice strikes. So shield slam does more damage for by 15%. That's fine. Very passive note. Don't have to think about it. Uh, we also have true might. So mortal strike and shield slam critically. Uh, when they critically strike, you gain an additional stack of colossus might. So if you're kind of thinking back to some of the earlier nodes, you might think like, okay, if I critically strike twice. I'm now going to be in like almost like two or three globals. I'm going to be at max stacks, uh, which is fine for things like Tide of Battle or like things like Arterial Bleed, but you're going to be hitting the cap really quick and then you're just kind of sitting on these stacks. So it kind of feels a little counterintuitive because you want to gain, you want to get to the max stacks, but then like you're sitting there and like you're getting a little bit of damage here and there, but um, you really want to be hitting that demolished. But luckily, we'll, the capstone uh, provides CDR. And then lastly, Mountain of Muscle and Scars. This is kind of my favorite one in here, even though it's very passive and very bland. My favorite part is that your size is going to be increased by 5%. So your character is just going to be bigger than everyone else by a little bit. I wish it was more. I wish it was like 10%. That'd be really funny. Um, and then, of course, the actual passive here is you deal 5% more damage and you take 2.5% less damage just passively. So it's like having 5% free versatility um, just across the board. I think it's very flavorful. You are a Colossus. It is kind of tied into the whole theme of the hero talents. Um, big fan of this. So let's talk about Unstoppable Force. Now this is the capstone of this hero talent. So Colossus might now stacks up to 10 times. So instead of five, um, which is pretty awesome. So that means your demolish will now be 100% more um, powerful than its you know base. And then same with your like Tide of Battle, now your Avenge is going to be increased by 20% instead of 10, and Arterial Bleed will be 20% instead of 10. So there is a little bit of synergy there. And then when you're at max stacks, 
and you gain a stack of coloss uh, of colossal might. The cooldown of demolish is going to be reduced by two seconds. You're going to have CDR kind of baked in. And then the the second part of this is while channeling demolish, you're grounded, making you immune to stuns and effects that move you. This in PVE most likely won't matter as much. I mean, there's there might be some like nuanced knockbacks. Again, we don't know anything about like the dungeons, the raids. Um, could be pretty good in PVP, but again, I don't know from a prot warrior perspective if you're really going to be in PVP compared to like just an arms warrior. But you'll be immune to stuns and effects that move you, which is kind of cool, I guess. If there's some cool like knockbacks, you can like plan out how to counter them. But yeah, basically, you're going to be getting CDR and demolish. You're going to be hitting it more frequently, which kind of like comes back to the main couple of concerns that I have is okay, how long is the channel and does it scale with haste? Is it a two second channel? Is it a four second channel? Is it a 10 second channel? I doubt it'll be 10 seconds. More than likely it's going to be three or four. But even then, if you're getting cooldown reduction, you're going to be incentivized to be channeling way more frequently than you probably want to. Now, I know Demon Hunter in its current state has about a 20-ish, 25 second cooldown reduction or cooldown on Fell Devastation, but they're channeling it pretty frequently. Now, the thing about uh, Fell Devastation is... Fell Devastation gives the Demon Hunter Metamorphosis, which is a very powerful defensive cooldown. You know, it provides a little bit more damage through, like, Soul Fragments healing, but mostly it's the health and armor that they're gaining from that. Demolish doesn't grant the Warrior anything. You're just channeling attacks, and from what I understand, you're not really going to be able to use any abilities during the channel. Now, again, I might be wrong. If you can use abilities during the channel, I think it's going to be actually insanely fun. I think you're going to be like being grounded as like this colossus just towering over your enemies. Well, more than likely they'll be towering over us, but you know, towering over the mobs and just like being this unstoppable force of like channeling a flurry of strikes. Uh, I, th I think is just like really cool thematically. I think there might be some issues depending on how this channel actually operates. And I think that's really what we need to wait to look out for. I really like this tree. I think it's simple enough to not really change how Prot Warrior is going to work. You're gaining one additional button. Well, maybe two if you're now talenting into Shockwave, but if you weren't before, uh, or if you were, you're going to gain one ability. Everything else is passive. You're just going to gain stacks and stuff as you're in combat. And then when you do hit Demolish, it's going to be amplified without having to really think too much about it. Uh, the only other major concern that I have is the cooldown reduction component of it. More often than not, Prop Warriors can kind of hit everything on cooldown. Through their anger management talent, they get a lot of cooldown reduction on things like Avatar and Shield Wall. And more often than not, Avatar is kind of your damage cooldown, and you pretty much hit it on cooldown, and you're normally getting around, what, 40, 45 seconds? You're probably going to want to try to line this up with Demolish, and at a base level, it's a 45 second cooldown as well. So pretty much you're going to Avatar and then go into a Demolish right away. The big concern here is now you're getting cooldown reduction once you hit 10 stacks. Your critical strikes will give you two stacks, so you're going to be getting there pretty frequently. And of course, every time you shield slam. So when you're getting constant procs, uh, especially if you're going a little bit more crit, not that you're going to want to stack it, but if you are building more into a crit build for damage or you're just, you get lucky with crits, you're going to hit 10 stacks really quickly, which is fine because it's going to amplify all your other, you know, damaging abilities, but it's giving you cooldown reduction. But if you're going to sit on the cooldown to wait for Avatar, it kind of defeats the purpose of having the cooldown reduction in this talent. Now, you are still getting the benefit of 10 stacks on your rend if you're playing arterial or tide of battle with revenge but you're losing that second half which the cooldown reduction is essentially irrelevant and again the grounded effect super specific i you know we'll have to wait and see if there's any specific knockbacks but honestly warriors and knockbacks they're never really annoyed you have an ability called charge uh, which can get you back to the target pretty quickly. So knockbacks have never really been like a big issue. So yeah, we're going to just have to see. But I would say overall, um, you know, my thoughts are, I I'm pretty positive about this tree specifically for Protection Warrior. I'm going to leave this WoW head post in the uh, description below, as well as the link to the, the World of Warcraft uh, version of it on their website, just in case if people want a different way to read it. Overall, pretty happy. I think there, there needs to be some things answered first, like the shockwave positioning, as well as how the Demolish channel actually interacts with the character. But outside of that, I'm pretty excited and I'm, I'm, I'm eager to start testing it probably when beta comes out. Um, probably won't be seeing it. Probably won't be on alpha, but uh, beta for sure. Anyways, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below, and uh, I will be covering a couple of the other tanks very soon. All right, anyways, thank you guys so much, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.